This is the Mercedes GP W02, a Formula One car, but not just any Formula One car. This is a Silver Arrow, part of a legendary tradition. They've thrilled fans for over 75 years, driven by heroes of their time, be it Juan Manuel Fangio or Sterling Moss, Michael Schumacher or Nico Rosberg. Only the best drive a Silver Arrow, then as now. Back in 1954 and 55, Juan Manuel Fangio and the W196 were unbeatable. They won two consecutive world championships. Drum brakes, 2.5 litre normally aspirated engine, water cooling, top speed, 280 kilometers per hour. It is uh, uh, incredible to see the, the skill that those drivers had to have to drive those cars on the limit on racetracks like these or Monte Carlo or wherever. Uh, but to compare it to nowadays, it's obviously uh, very different, uh, uh, but uh, certainly no less fun. How does the W196 feel? What's it like to drive? Nico Rosberg and Michael Schumacher tackle a legendary Silver Arrow. It was unique in Formula One, two bodywork styles on one car, with the open wheel and streamliner versions. The streamliner was more aerodynamically efficient, specifically developed for high-speed circuits like Monza. Otherwise, the cars were almost identical. Straight eight, front engine design, 280 horsepower, five-speed manual transmission. Well, it's, uh, it's like a go-kart, you know, you're really, uh, you're high up, you see a lot, uh, very, very, a lot of horsepower, um, for sure not much grip, you know, compared to what we're used to, so you can easily slide and everything, uh, just great. It's pretty much impressive to see the technical aspect, the power, the brakes, that they have been able already in, in these days, in 1954, to provide the race drivers. One driver from that glorious era was the young German Hans Hermann. With teammates Juan Manuel Fangio, Karl Kling, Sterling Moss, they left the competition in their wake regarded as unbeatable. The Silver Arrows won nine races from 12 starts. Driving then was a manual craft. You had to declutch, shift gear and brake, and do everything by hand. Let's say that put the spotlight fairly firmly on the driver. Of course, everything had to work well together. It had to be the right car, a decent engine, design and chassis, and a good team. Today, a driver uses a steering wheel like a control center. It regulates the car's fuel mixture, pit radio, and even the Kurs hybrid system. Back then, the wheel merely served its primary purpose, steering. 42.5 centimeters in diameter, a wooden rim which was 2.4 centimeters thick. In 2011, the drivers lie prone in the cockpit and achieve top speeds of 350 kilometers per hour. But that's only 70 kilometers per hour more than in 1955, sitting upright with an extra large steering wheel. Sitting on a cushion, you know, uh, no seat belts, steering wheel, huge steering wheel right here, uh, which is just, and it's very, very light. Uh, and then also uh, the pedals, you have the gearbox right between your legs. So you have one pedal all the way on the right, the other pedal all the way on the left. So you're sitting there like this with your legs. <laughs> and here's the throttle and brake, and there's the clutch. And that's so awkward. But then when you're driving, get used to it very quickly. Over three quarters of a century have passed between then and now. In this time, one thing never changed, the spirit of the Silver Arrow. It makes this car what it is, a motor racing legend.